name is Kristen Jankowitz. I'm an author and a DMC designer. Embroidery is a timeless craft. My grandmother taught my mother, my mother taught me, and today I'd like to teach you. What's so wonderful about embroidery is it's a really great way to refresh both your clothing and your home decor. It's a wonderful way to breathe new life into some old things that you have around and an inexpensive way to create a boutique look on just your basic t-shirts or jeans or to personalize and embellish your home decor like pillows. You just need a couple tools to get started. First is a chenille needle. That's a really great needle for embroidery because it has a pointed tip so it pierces easily through your fabric. Also, we're going to be using a number 22 today. That corresponds to the size of the eye. The idea is that your eye needs to be big enough to create a hole so that your pearl cotton can easily slide through the fabric. We've also got some helpful tools. A needle puller will help you get a grip if you're having a hard time so that you can grasp onto your needle. There's also a needle threader for people like me who like to cheat. We'll show you how to use this in a little bit. And some other helpful tools are thread conditioner, which simply puts a coating on your thread to make it slide through easily, and a thimble to protect your fingertips. We're going to start off with a very easy stitch called a running stitch. I'll show you how to start with the pearl cotton. First, you're just going to start by taking the ends off, and it's kind of twisted up. So you're going to untwist, and you can see that there's already kind of a loop. So you can just open this up and you've got all of your pearl cotton. Now I find that this is a really easy length for me to work with. So a lot of times I'll just take my embroidery scissors and cut. Might take you a couple snips to get through the whole thing. So now you have all of these lengths of pearl cotton to work with. Now I told you that I'd show you the needle threader. I'm going to take one thread of pearl cotton and my number two chenille needle. And this is pretty cool. You're going to stick your needle threader through the eye of your needle and then you simply thread the pearl cotton through. So you've got a big eye to work with on the needle puller. Then you're just going to pull it through and you're all set. So that was really easy. Then we're going to tie a knot at the other end. I kind of wrap it around my finger, make a little twist to give my knot something substantial, and then just pull it tight. So we are all ready to go. This is what our running stitch is going to look like. It's basically a dotted line. We're just going to start with our fabric, and we're going to enter from the back side. With my pointy chenille needle, it's really easy to guide my needle and my pearl cotton straight through so that the knot catches. Then, depending on how long you would like your stitch to be, I'm just going to make mine a couple millimeters. I'm going to go back into my fabric, straight down, and pull it all the way through. That's all there is to it. We're going to come back up through the fabric, pull it all the way through because you don't want to get any knots on the back, and then we're going to go back straight in to the back side. Wasn't that easy? I've seen this on a lot of men's attire even, around the collar. It makes it re look really expensive, hip, boutique. Um, so that's a really good start. But we're going to move on to something just a little bit more complicated, or at least it looks more complicated. This is called the back stitch. And it's called the back stitch because you're actually kind of working backwards. You already know how to thread your needle, so I've got one ready. And you're going to start the exact same way as you did with the running stitch. You're going to go in from the back right through. And you're actually going to create one stitch forward to start. So far we're doing the exact same thing that we did in our running stitch. Okay, now you're going to come up a couple millimeters in front of your end, pull it all the way through. This is why it's called the back stitch, because we're going to come back towards the first stitch and pull it through. So now we've got a line of stitches instead of having a gap in between. 
We're going to continue the same way. Come up through the fabric, just a little bit in front of your ending, all the way through, and then come back again towards your stitch. You could do this forever. It's a really fun, easy stitch when you keep going. Okay, this is kind of the same idea. This is called a satin stitch. Now with the satin stitch, as you can see on my example, I just did a straight line. The satin stitch is normally used to fill something in, like maybe the inside of a letter or a design. So what I'm going to do is use my ruler and a water-soluble marker. That just means that when I get this marker wet, the ink will disappear. A hint is to, instead of pressing and really letting the marker soak in, to just use it lightly, and it makes it come out a little bit easier. So just as a guide, I'm going to make a straight line. Okay, now I'm going to take my needle, and it doesn't matter which side I want to start with, but I'm going to come up through my fabric, and then I'm going to work my way straight across. So I'm going to put my needle back in at the line parallel. Okay, so I've created a horizontal stitch. Then I'm going to come back up again as close to my first initial stitch as possible. So I'm going to try to get really close here, pull it through. And I'm simply going to continue with this. Now I'm going to go down into my fabric as close as I can to that initial horizontal stitch. So it looks really great with the sheen pearl cotton. And actually, it's a substantial enough thread that it takes fewer stitches than you would think to really fill in a space. But I'm just going to continue that way as close as I can to the previous stitch. And that's all there is to a satin stitch. The French knot is one of my favorites. It looks really fun, it adds a lot of texture, and it's also kind of a good embellishment with some of the other stitches. It looks tricky, but it's pretty easy if you just think it through. Okay, we've got our needle threaded. So I'm going to start at the top again. Actually, you can start wherever you want with these. And I'm gonna go in through the back. Once again, pull your pearl cotton straight through. Now I've kind of got a long tail on mine. It's nice to not get it twisted up. Then what you're going to do is pull, kind of lay your fabric flat and pull your pearl cotton straight. Take your needle and you're going to wrap your pearl cotton around your needle two times. So I'm starting from the back here. I'm wrapping it around once, twice. Now you keep this pulled so that you don't have any loose thread, and then I'm going to stick my needle back into the same hole, pull my pearl cotton tight, and just continue to stick my needle through my fabric. And as you pull it through, it creates this really cute knot. Let's do another one to make sure you've got it. We're going in through the back straight up. Again, I like to lay it flat. Okay, we're going to take our needle, we're going to wrap around once, wrap around twice, put your needle back into the same hole, pull your thread. Okay, now you're going to pick your fabric up and pull your needle straight down. Got a perfect French knot. Okay, moving on. Now we're going to do something called a stem stitch. This stitch is pretty cool because it's kind of thicker. And it's also very easy to do. It's the same idea as the back stitch that we already did. But there's a little trick to it that I'll show you. We're going to start exactly the same way as we have with all the other stitches in through the back. All right. Now this stitch we're going to make a little bit longer than we have previously. 
So instead, say I did three millimeters long before, now I'm going to go about six millimeters. I'm going to make this one pretty long. So I'm going to go back into my fabric. And I'm going to pull it through almost so that it's flush with my fabric, but I've left a little loop. See that? Then I'm going to come up through the back side at the midpoint of that loop. And when I come up, I'm going to pull it all the way. So see what happened? I've got one big stitch, and then my pearl cotton's coming up from the side of that stitch. Now you're going to see how this works out. I'm going to go back into my fabric about six millimeters again from where I came up so that the end of your first stitch is in the middle. I'm going to pull my needle through so I've got a little loop left and I want to make sure that when I bring my needle up it's always on the same side of that loop. So since I came up on the left the first time I'm going to come up on the left the second time. I'm going to come in through that same midpoint and pull my pearl cotton all the way through. So that's starting to make a really beautiful kind of twist design or stem stitch. We're going to do a couple more just so that you get the idea. We're going to go in again, pull it through, leave just a little loop, pull it to the side so you can see, Then I'm going to come in through the back at the midpoint, which is the end of my last stitch, and pull it all the way up. So that's starting to look really beautiful and you can see from the sample how it looks when it's complete. The last stitch that we're going to learn is called the split stitch and it starts exactly the same way as most of the other stitches that we've already learned how to do. We're going to start from the back side of our fabric once again. All the way through. Then we're going to create a large stitch like our stem stitch. And now we're going to jump ahead. We're going to come up through our fabric about halfway from the first stitch that we created. Okay, this is the same idea as the back stitch, except instead of going back through our fabric to meet the first stitch, we're going to actually pierce through it or split it. So now I'm going to go through my first stitch straight down and pull it all the way through. Let's repeat that. We're going to jump ahead about half the width of our first stitch, pull it all the way through, and then we're going to work our way back like the back stitch again, piercing through the center of the stitch that we just created. Let's do one more. I'm going to go about halfway forward. There we go. Pull it all the way through our fabric and work our way back, splitting the last stitch that we created. There we go. And that's all there is to it. Now that you know some of the basic stitches, you can really use your creativity. Embroidery is pretty cool because it's free form. So in order to actually get it onto the clothes or the home decor that you'd like, you can use several different things. One of the things that I like to use is a hoop. This is a pretty traditional tool. All you do is there are two pieces to the hoop. There's going to be a smaller inner circle and then a bigger outer circle with this little screw piece on it to loosen and tighten. So you're going to make sure that it's loose and then you're going to lay whatever you're stitching over, whether it's a t-shirt, um, any flat piece of fabric. And I'm simply going to slide my hoop over it and then I'm going to tighten the screw and see how that's pulled really nice and tight so that it doesn't shift around while I'm stitching. So that's one option. Sometimes you can't always use a hoop though. Another thing that I really like to use, especially on a t-shirt that's a little bit stretchy so that my stitches don't get warped, is a fabric stabilizer. And those are really great and easy to use. It's simply like a piece of paper that you iron on to the back or the wrong side of whatever you're going to be stitching on and that'll give you a really solid surface for your stitching. 
So let's set that aside. There are some other really great helpful tools that we have because you know things aren't always on clothing. Like we said, you can do tote bags, you can do pillows around the house. So I bet you're wondering how you're going to transfer all of this stuff. Well, there are a couple different ways. For those of you who are creative and want to make your own design, there's the water soluble markers that we talked about earlier. Kind of showed you how to use one. You simply draw it on your fabric lightly. And then when you're done, you can take a cool, damp cloth and put it right over your lines and they'll simply disappear, never to be seen again. Another neat thing is a pencil. And it's kind of chalky, um, so it works well on dark fabrics. Um, they come in different colors. This white one I'd use on dark. Um, and then it just kind of rubs away when you're done. Even sort of throughout your stitching, it'll start to disappear on its own. There are also some other neat things that DMC has. One of them is tracing paper. So that's pretty self-explanatory. You can lay the tracing paper down, and if there's a design that you like that's maybe on out of a magazine or something that you've printed off of your computer, you can lay that over and trace just as you would with tracing paper, and it pretty much transfers your image. There are a couple other ways to transfer the images as well. One of them is a stencil, and stencils are so handy and we all know how to use them already. You simply put it on top of your article, and then you can use something like a water-soluble pen to go around the stencil and have your pattern appear. You can make your bland hoodies extraordinary using simple stitches. This back stitch of piece really accentuates and customizes your hoodie. We also used a French knot to accentuate the points on the back stitch. We took a basic pair of denim jeans and made them look boutique chic. Using just a simple French knot and a back stitch, we punched up the simple paisley design. This is a simple brown blouse, but with the addition of a floral design, we made it couture. A stem stitch is fitting for the stems. We also used a back stitch and a French knot to add dimension. These bland tan slacks become a work of wearable art with the sophisticated texture of a satin stitch and a split stitch. We even added some beads for extra dimension. It's fun and easy to breathe new life into an old favorite shirt. Using a simple running stitch, you can make your old garment look fresh and hip. Whether it's a personalization initial or a sweet word, the satin stitch is perfect for filling in letters and designs alike. If a tattoo is too permanent for you, you can mimic your favorite trendy design on a basic shirt. No one will ever believe that you created something so cool using only a basic backstitch. If you'd like more information about embroidery, there's a really great section on the DMC website. It's the Learning Center. It, there's a fashion embroidery section and it'll give you many more ideas for instructions and patterns. Please check it out. I have a great time and all of your friends will be so impressed with the boutique items that you've created for yourself and for them. You'll have a wonderful time embellishing everything around your world.